Welcome back, everybody. Had to take a bit of a medical leave due to a severe jaw injury, which still has a couple weeks to heal more than likely, but I think I can do this provided I speak very slowly, so please forgive me if I sound a little weird. Today, we are going to be going over a purple skin tone recipe using a totally not an alithid pinup miniature from Artisan Guild. I am starting off with a mix of Vallejo model colors red, violet, and brown rose. And to the left of your screen, new little feature so you can see where we are in the painting process. This is our first shade coat I am beginning with rather than our secondary shade or our base coat. Mix this up and then I quickly realized it was a little on the dark side for my base coat, so I just transfer it over and call it the first shade. So we have our shade blocked in. Now we can start with our base coat. And the base coat is thinned. We are beginning the layering process now. So you can see on the palette, hopefully in the background, how thin the paint is. And we just slowly build up about three coats of our base coat here. Same mixture I had before, however, I mixed in some Game Color Heavy Warm Gray. Uh, really like this color. It's one of my favorite colors, so any chance I get to use it, I use it. For our first highlight, I am just going to mix in more of the Heavy Warm Gray. Again, we are layering here. Paint is very thin and I'm not just covering up everything in one coat. Uh, what you actually see here is just one part of the process. I go around the figure about three times at this stage, uh, slowly building up the highlights so we don't have any brush strokes and we are up to the proper level of highlighting at this step. For both our second and third highlight, I'm mixing in some Game Color Pale Flesh. Now, the reason I'm switching over our highlight color from the Heavy Warm Gray to Pale Flesh is because if I continue to use the Heavy Warm Gray, that's going to give kind of a undead pallor to her skin. And so I want a little bit of warmth, which will work very well with the purple tone that we have on the figure. The second thing I want to note is that with our new chart, you see that there are two shade layers, a base coat, and four highlights. However, I'm only doing three highlights on this miniature. General rule of thumb when it comes to highlighting is you want double the amount of highlights as you do have shade. However, in this case, I found three to be quite enough, mainly because we have a very curvy figure here and not a whole bunch of hard edges. Uh, if this was some buff, muscular Conan type character, then we can have more contrast. But in this case, we have subtle curves that we are trying to highlight, not hard edges. So three highlights is enough. Then finally, we return to our secondary shade. Remember, we skipped that one at the beginning, so I'm putting it in now with some Vallejo model color violet. Now, technically, this is the start of our glazing set, and this is the glaze for our shade regions. However, uh, because it's so similar to uh, the red-violet mix we started off with, uh, not only is it changing the color of our shadows, it's also darkening them as well because the violet I picked is so dark. So this is kind of a, a combo stage, adding both shadow and color to our recesses. The glaze for our highlights is a mix of model color brown rose and game color gory 
red. That was a very hard word for me to say right now. And this is a better example of uh, what a glaze is supposed to do because a glaze is not used to highlight or shade but to add a little bit of color, a little bit of spice to a miniature and it's always good to glaze your skin tones to add a little life to them. In this case I'm adding that mixture uh, going very heavy on the ends, the tips of her tentacles and also a little on the palms and other places I normally put them on a figure such as uh, knees and elbows in this case. Normally the face would get uh, some heavy glazes but we got no face here today. Last thing to do is to apply a glaze of that word I can't say without pain, red. And this is our glaze for kind of our base coat region. Also, I went a little bit heavy with it on the tentacles. So see they're adding a hint of red to the tentacles and also kind of base coat shade region. Just to add, once again, a little bit of color really makes uh, the miniature pop when you add all these little varieties of color whenever you can. And there we go. That is it. Sure looks easy, doesn't it? So two takeaways for you here. First of all, contrast is always good when painting miniatures. You need contrast, but you need to know how and where to apply it properly. Uh, we don't want extreme contrast on a, a curved surface like a hip or something like that. But if it's a six pack muscles, you know, bulging biceps, then you can get away with adding more contrast. Second thing is glazes, especially on skin glazes, uh, do a lot of uh, work and help to really improve the paint job so you don't have just a Barbie-esque smooth skin tone. You have color variations. So here we have uh, our, our red-violet skin tone. We have more violet in the recesses. We have red in the base coat and reddish pink on our highlights. So all those little subtle changes really makes the skin pop. So that is it for today. I am going to go rest my jaw now. And in case you're wondering, yes, there will be a video for the cloak. Thanks for watching. See you next time. Bye-bye. I've administered beatings to nearly 3,000 clients. Oh!